Guys, five stocks we're going to talk about today that are reasonable value plays. I own four of them, and the fifth one I missed out on, and I will go over that, hoping that it falls into my territory. Stock number one, Target. Target I own. Again, don't buy any company just because anybody on YouTube owns it. Understand the process, but Target is up huge today. Mo, why are they up so big? They reported earnings. And they're up 16.5%. Oh. And yesterday, they were up over 4%. So that's a, so 20%, a 20% jump. Yeah. Now, guys, I'm telling you right now, I was driving to work this morning. My fiance was with me. And I'm like, I'm like, God damn it. She goes, what? I said, Target is up 15% today. She's like, that's good. And I looked at her. She goes, oh, that's bad. I said, exactly. That is bad. I want stocks going down. I want you to feel the same way. Fortunately, most times when you buy a company, the stock price is going to go down. Target has been hit really hard. Had an all-time high of 256 back in November of 2021, right here. And it's fallen a lot because of theft, because everybody worried about retail. But they have a few nice little um, partnerships. They're partnering with Ulta Beauty, which oh, yeah, is a company that we're watching. Them. Yeah, and CVS, I believe, they're in. CVS is in their stores also. Is that the case? Well, yeah. they've always had Starbucks in their stores as yeah. well. Yep. I think Target is a staple. I don't think it's going out of business because of this new retail world environment. But um, there's a lot of positives here. I think there's a lot of short-term problems the company has, and I'm okay with that. The current dividend yield, for those of you dividend lovers, 3.9%. Now, that pays out $2 billion, and last year they only did $1.6 billion in free cash flow. So it's going to be a little tricky on this one. I don't know if it's a safe dividend or not, but... On their five-year average free cash flow, they can easily afford that dividend. And it's a more mature company, so I think it's going to be harder. Mo, what are your thoughts on Target? Do you have any, um, any comments the here? Big things right here. Comparable store, this, is, this just came out this morning. Comparable store sales down about 5%. Wow. Um, and digital. comparable store sales are important in retail because it says, hey, these stores that have been open for 12 or 18 months or more, here's how their sales have done. This one is huge. A 6% decline in digital comp sales. And well, that one good. is big because I mean, M Mikey's wife, she does a lot of target ordering. Yeah. That my means, brother's wife. That means that a lot of, maybe people are going away from that. Maybe. I don't like seeing that their same store sales are down 5% in store. And then this is like, I would have liked to see digital sales drop and the other one pick up. Or but something. isn't it interesting? The stock's up 16 and a half percent. Yeah. Well, they beat on earnings per share and revenue. So why wouldn't they? They did beat on revenue? Yeah, they beat on, they beat on revenue. Oh, let me, let me double check. But, um, so for a company like this, they guys, crushed on earnings per share. A company like this, you look at this earnings per share growth over the next five or six years, almost, more than doubling, Mo. Look wow. at that. More than doubling in the next five, six years. Yeah. Revenue growth. Not really a ton, but when it gets back to growth, it's low single digits. Yeah. Go ahead. So EPS came in at two dollars and ten cents versus a dollar forty-seven. Jeez. And revenue was twenty-five point four billion versus twenty-five point two eight. Okay, so not a big beat, but a beat nonetheless. Big beat here, though. Okay, let's look at our stock analyzer tool on Target to see because this thing has been beaten up like crazy. When was the last time I did a Target stock? Go to our history. In our software, was September 25th for me. Okay. Mo, revenue growth for 10 years. I did two and a half, four, five and a half, expecting inflation to stay with it. I did three, five, and seven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. Profit margin, I did 3.25, four, and 4.75. Okay. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. Pretty free cash flow, same thing. Okay. Now, PE and price of free cash flow. I think this is a company that... It's going to be around still because women still like to shop. People still, I don't think shopping is going away. And I think with all their locations, they'll be able to provide at home delivery very quickly like they do now, even faster. Mm -hmm. I did 15, 17 and a half and 20 PE and price of free cash flow 10 years from now. What'd you do? I did 15, 17 and 19. Okay. And for desired any return, this includes your dividend. I did 10, 12 and 14% because guys, as you... Increase your assumptions. You got to have a higher rate of return for yourself for margin of safety. What'd you do? I did the same. Okay. So you hit the analyze button. Stock's currently at 129. And look at this. I have 105 on the low side, which it was at 105 recently. 171 on the high side, 137 in the middle. Guys, if you like these numbers, remember, don't buy it just because I do. There's going to be a lot of bad news coming out. This is why I don't look at short-term earnings, but it might be something to look at right now. Yeah. And I'm comfortable with it. I was buying sub 130 and went down to 105. I still kept buying more shares and now it's skyrocketed and I'm actually upset about that. Company number two, another retail company that I own, Sprouts Farmers Market. This one's been very frustrating Yes, because we has. started buying this one at 30. I own this one as well. And it keeps going up. $42 a share, a very 
a niche um, grocery store. Right. They only have three or 400 locations. Yep. Look at the, this is what I like, Mo. 3.8% profit margin. Pull up a company like Kroger. That's, that is huge. Kroger is like one and a half or 2%. Yeah. So they have a bigger profit margin. They just brought on a CEO from Dollar Tree whose specialty was maximizing revenue per square foot. Kroger's is 1.4% on the five-year profit margin and 1.1% on the 12 months. Now, the only problem I have with Sprouts Farmer's Market is they don't sell pop. They don't sell real pop. Mm. Remember when we went there in Arizona? They make it for you. It's stupid, There's but I get it. It's, a, it's the kind of store it is. Yeah, somebody in a bonnet churning it in the back. But they still have a lot of growth potential. Yeah. They want to get, what's their, I think they said that their ideal size is 1,200 to 1,500 stores. They're at 400 right now. They have great cookies. They have great cookies. So I'm still a fan of this one. I like the man. I don't like this. Why are you paying a dividend, guys? <laughs> Grow up. Save your 20 million. Do something else with it. <laughs> So for a company like this that has a lot of growth potential to be selling for the high double digits with a pretty decent return on invested capital, not great, but decent. Man, I look at that going, let's look at their eight pillars here. Look at that. The only, the only mark against them is their debt, yeah. which is probably their leases. Yep. Let's look and see what analysts are saying. Ooh, not much growth in the um, EPS. Isn't that interesting? No, that surprises me. Yeah. Actually. With revenue growth big time. Big decline they see in 26 and 20. Well, they come back in 27, but. Interesting. Okay. Well, maybe they're right. Maybe. But it's interesting. Look at their revenue growth assumptions. Almost a 50% revenue right, growth right. number. 40% growth. Yeah. That's hmm. very interesting. All right. Let's pull up. Um, I don't think I've done this one for quite some time. Our stock analyzer yeah, tool. I did this in May. SFM. I beat this up. So I. I did in August. This is where I, this is before or during the time I was buying it. And I think I beat it up so bad just to see what would happen here. Okay. So I did three, five, and seven. What'd you do? Yeah, I did zero, two, and five. Wow. Like I beat the hell out of it. Okay. Look at the profit margin though. I did 3.2, 3.7, 4.2. for free cash flow, if you look at their free cash flow in the last five years, it tends to be a little bit higher. Mm. So I did three, five, four, and 4.5. Okay. Now for PE, I did 14, 16, and 18. Okay. Now, Desired annual return, I only put 10% in here to show what I think the company's worth, but I'm going to change that. It's a smaller company, so I need a little bit more return. I'm going to do 12, 13.5, and 15% returns. What'd you, what are you doing? I did 10, 12, and 14%. See, if I look at 10, it's such a small company. I also give it 0% revenue growth. That is true. <laughs> that is true. You know. So I hit the analyze button. It's at $42 a share. Low price, 25 to 28. High price, 41 to 45. Middle price of 32 to 35. And I have in my watch list sub 40. I'm probably going to sell puts mm -hmm. at lower prices when it hits 40. So what'd you do, Mo? So I, did, I had 18 to 30 with a $23 in the middle range. But I look at this saying, okay, my high end price is probably where it's going to sit. And that's why I was buying around 30 bucks. So. Okay. With 14% um, margin of safety. Stock number three. Three. I do not own this company. Google, but I love Google. And what was going on with Google yesterday with Apple? What was the conversation about they're paying Apple X percent to stay part it's of their like search? 37% of something to stay a part of the and I, and default it's, search. And what did, what did Dalton say? He's like, oh man, if they don't get that, the rest, like uh, their, their search is going to plummet. I'm so, like, no, it's not. So th think of a world where you go and you get your new iPhone and you put the new software on it and you have DuckDuckGo <laughs> as the as the uh, default search. What, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to go in there and change duck, it to Google. Duck, duck, throw my iPhone. That was pretty funny. Did you guys laugh at that? <laughs> no, Tim just said no. Did you get it though? Uh, duck, duck, yeah. go, duck, duck, throw. Yeah, I get it. it Speaking of iPhones. <laughs> Nick, how's your iPhone doing? <laughs> Speaking of throwing. <laughs> Speaking of throwing. All right, so Google, guys. The two top search engines in the world are Google.com and a little website you might have heard of called YouTube. The set website you're on right now, I'm sure everybody knows, is owned by YouTube by Google. YouTube's owned by Google. They generate they paid 1.6 billion for it back in 2007. They generate like 16 billion a quarter on revenue or something, something crazy like that. I don't know what the exact number is, but it is insane. The buy of all buys. And Google has skyrocketed. Back in January, it was at $85 a share. It's now at 135. Guys, I hate to admit it, I did not buy it back in January. I did not buy back in January. Did you buy anything? I feel so dumb. Cause I had my, I think I had my price between 80 and 85 and I'm like, ah, I didn't hit 85 yet. At, Let me wait. At the same point, it's still part of the Magnificent Seven. Yep. You're right. It's so. part of the Magnificent Seven. I do expect this company to fall hard when stocks fall because 
The big leaders going into the boom are the big leaders that drop along with it. Mm -hmm. Here's our eight pillars. Mo, what do we love here? Valuation metrics. Our That's two it. first and last metric are the valuation metrics. It's selling for 31 times. It's an X. But guys, does that mean it's really not worth it? I don't no. necessarily think so. This might, you might want to pay 30 times. Yeah, because guys, look at the world is growing. Look at the online world is growing still. Advertising is still going to go up. Who's the number one in search in this world? It's yeah. Google. Mm -hmm. So this could very well be a justifiable price. Remember, the pillars aren't here to tell you buy or sell. The pillars are here just to give you an idea of what questions you should be asking. So the question I'm looking at here is, is this a reasonable price for Google? Mm -hmm. Well, let's go look at some assumptions that the analysts are making. Mo, what analyst assumptions are they making out there? So they today we're oh, end of this year five dollars and eighty three cents, going to ten dollars and fifty five cents by the end of double digit growth That's every huge. yeah it's for a one point six eight trillion dollar market cap company. On the revenue side, three hundred and thirteen and a half billion end of this year, four hundred and sixty five billion end of two thousand twenty seven. That's about. Nine ten percent growth over the next yeah. five years, and big gross margin, fifty six percent gross margin. Every dollar extra they bring in, fifty six cents of it goes to the bottom line, essentially before taxes. That's incredible. So let's go to our stock analyzer tool. When's the last time you did a googly moogly? Last time I did it was October second. I didn't look at the date for me, but I'm wondering if I'm being too conservative here on my numbers. What'd you put? I did five eight eleven on revenue growth. I did six nine and twelve. You're probably better on that one. Profit margin, I did 21, 23, and 25. I did 20, 23, and 26. Okay. I did uh, 21, 23, and 25 on free cash flow as well. Okay. I did 20, 23, 26. What about PE? I did 17, 20, and 23. So did I. You know, I look at revenue growth, Mo, and I go, 8% revenue growth. Is that unrealistic? I don't think so. No, I'm not. E I don't think so either. But the thing is about profit margin. If they have 56% gross margin, as they drive that revenue number up, what's going to happen to profit margin? Go up. It should go up as well. So I think I'm going to change my profit margin number just slightly. I'm going to go 22, 24, and 26. It's interesting to see that basically they've done 23 as an average, call it, over the last 10 years. But it's, yeah, over the last five years, 20, it did 22.5 and then 23.8. So it has increased over the last um, 10 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay doing 22, 24, and 26. I could be wrong there. It could be higher than that. Yeah. I hit the analyze button. I have 100 on the low side, 170 on the high side, 130 in the middle. I have it on my watch list at 120. I'm wondering if I should change that. No, I'm not going to change that. I'm yeah. still okay with this. If I paid today's price for the company, guys, and these assumptions, these are the returns you'd get, including dividends if they ever pay it, on the company. Yeah. And don't forget, this company spits out cash. If this company falls in price in half, Google better be buying the F of their shares back. They better be buying shares back like it's their job. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. They've bought back shares um, for the last six years. Yeah. I want, to be buying, I want them to be buying a lot a of lot, shares. Right. I actually think 130 I think these prices are reasonable. It is. I, think, I do think it's pretty reasonable, especially if you're going to dollar cost average. So why am I being a wuss and not buying it, Mo? Because it's a Magnificent 7 stock? That's probably what it is. So am I trying to time the market? Maybe. 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 Or am I having recency bias when I see $85 there so just, just, just 10 it. months ago, yeah. and I was close to buying, but it didn't hit the exact 85 number, and that's mm -hmm. part of the problem. Sometimes that happens. Yep. Stock number four. I own this one as well, Southwest Airlines. I get a lot of criticism on this one, which makes me love it even more. Southwest, guys, look at this. The stock's at 2441. If you look back at our videos, back after COVID, I paid $25 to this company. It got taken away from me at $48, and I never bought back in. We are below the price I paid during COVID. And the 52 week low was just uh, 14 days ago at 2191. Yep. So I've been buying these shares as it goes down. Guys, I will tell you the play on Southwest is can they get back to pre COVID margin levels? So their margin in the last five years is 2.2%. Last year was 2%. Let's go to right before COVID. Let's go to the, f the full year before COVID $22.4 billion in revenue, 2.4 in profit. That's about 11 or 12%. That's about 11% profit margin. They're currently operating at 2%. And that also included the 737 <laughs> max issue that oh, cost them $800 that. million. Dollars. I forgot about that. So they could have made 
over $3 billion in profit pre, well, after taxes, call it about $3 billion, 2.8 or 2.9 billion in profit after taxes, mm. which is about 14%, 15% profit margin. These are the guys that had the Christmas Not that Day much. disaster with their software, right? Yeah, and okay. that's the thing. Another thing that I think affected it. Okay. Look at their gross margin, though, in the last year, 17.7%. Wow. Let's go look at it, what, what it was pre-COVID. About th- almost 30%. So that's where I look at it going, no, 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 no. I just truly believe this, this is the, really my theory on this one is this company is going to, is going to get back to more, more normalized levels of profit and it'll really jump the price up. Let me look at our, our Southwest Airlines stock analyzer. By the way, what are the analysts saying, Mo? Uh, they have $1.67 at the end of this year, $3.78 per share, end of 2027. That's some big growth. Yeah. So guys, before I get into Stock Analyzer tool, if you like what you see so far, if you want access to our full community of thousands of investors, go to everythingmoney.com, free seven-day full access trial. Go sign up for it. Now let's get into Stock Analyzer tool for Southwest. I did two, four, and 6% revenue growth. Okay. I did six and a half, nine and a half, 12 and a half profit margin. So still lower on the middle side than they were doing before COVID. I did the same thing for free cash flow, even though their free cash flow in the last five years was higher. Last 10 years, it's actually a little bit lower, but I'm okay with that. PE. I actually think I went too conservative on PE. I did 13, 15, and 17. Yeah, 14, 16, 18. Yeah, because I think look at myself, like this is a good airline. Before COVID, it never had a, a loss in a year. Yeah. Very well-run airline. Their focus is regional flights and the same airplane. Mm-hmm. They, they only have one type of airplane, the 737. Their goal is we're going to own this airplane and we're going to dominate it. We're going we're gonna to have inventory on our parts. It's going to be all consistent. I'm going to go 15, 17, and 19. Now, desired return. I did 10, 12, and 14. I did 10, 13, and 16. Okay. I don't blame you. Yeah. Here are the prices. <laughs> Low price of 34, high price of 77, middle price of 55. If my middle assumptions occur and I buy it for today's price, I'm going to make about a 25% return on my money over the next 10 years. Guys, don't buy it just because of this. You got to understand and feel comfortable that they're going to get back to normalized gross margin and profit margin. That's my entire thesis here. The airline industry is a tough industry, but there's one outlier in there. I look at, kind of look at it as the Ferrari of yeah. the auto industry. It's it, it, funny. It's a, yes, because it's, it's a budget airline, yeah. but in the sense of they have this way of operating that's just totally different than everybody else. Right. So guys, that's my play here on that one. Final company, another company that I own, PayPizzle, PayPal. <laughs> now PayPal, guys, has had a fall from grace. Rallied back up recently. Whoa. $310 a share was the all-time high just, uh, just two years and four months ago at $310 per share. It is now at 57 and the 52-week low was just three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, $50.25. It's up 15% in the last couple of weeks, but you guys know me, I don't give enough about that. Here's something I love, Mo. Five-year net income, $3.3 billion. Five-year free cash flow, $4.4 billion. Had people recently tell me PayPal is a declining revenue business. To which I then go to the income statement and I go quarterly. They did 7.4 billion last quarter. In the previous year's same quarter, they did 6.85. How is that declining, Mo? They own uh, Venmo. Yeah. They own Venmo. Venmo's I literally, cool. what was that? Venmo's cool. Venmo's awesome. I use it a lot. I use it a ton. PayPal is a very secure place to buy. They're very pro um, consumer. I'm a big fan of PayPal. Let's look at analyst estimates. Look at this. According to analyst estimates for this year, they're going to make $5 a share going to eight eighty. dollars Again, these are analyst estimates. We don't know exactly. But this is, this is the part of, the, this is what hurts about companies. When you go from three ten dollars to fifty, dollars the news follows the stock price. When I hear people say, like literally to me, I think it's funny that somebody can look at me on Twitter and say, Paul, I don't know why you like PayPal. The revenue is declining. And I sit there and go, that's like me telling me, oh, I can't believe a, I can't believe an animal is talking to me because I didn't know animals could speak. Like they're, they're a human being. This is literally, you're, you're sitting there and it's objectively, the company is growing its revenue. Unless they're lying. But if they're lying, why is their free cash flow bigger than their, than their, um, than their net income? Yeah, they're lying about that too. <laughs> Probably are. So let's pull up PayPal in our stock analyzer tool. 
<laughs> the last time I did it was September 25th. I did four, eight, and 12% revenue growth. Same. I did 12 and a half, 16 and a half, and 20 and a half profit margin. Okay. Free cash flow is, has been higher the last five and 10 years. I did 16, 20, and 24. Okay. PE, I did 13, 16, and 19. Same with Whoa. price of free. What'd you do? I did 16, 18, and 20. Wow. Hmm. And then return, I did 11, 13, and 15. Okay. So I'm going to hit the analyze button. Stock's currently 57 bucks. Low price of 44 to 57, high price of 120 to 143, middle price of 76 to 92. So I'm gonna, I, I, it's not on my watch list right now because I, I just got the stock. So I'm going to put it back on 55 just to notify me. I do own the stock and I'll be dollar cost averaging as it goes down. And remember guys, I want these stocks to go down. I expect these stocks to go down. The stock market is currently overvalued. These are the five companies that we think are decent values. But remember, they will probably fall more. So if you can't handle that and you can't handle buying more, don't do it. Thank you very much for watching.